Hello, this is Lady Boule, and I hope your day is going or has gone beautifully. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Please hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are uploaded. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. If you'd like to have a topic discussed, let me know in the comments section or email me at ladyboulet8596 at aol.com. So the question of the day is, what's wrong in the black community? If you ask black women, they'll say it's black men. If you ask black men, they'll say it's black women. Now I'm not going to play around with this question. It's black men that's responsible for the crimes in the black community. They're acting out rashly in some cases. In some cases, they are acting on the spur of the moment, out of jealous rage or anger. They're committing homicide against each other. They're also committing homicide and infanticide against the women who are carrying their children. So the question then is, what is going on with black men? I don't buy the idea that black men are so much more evil than other men in society. If you talk to white women, and I talk to white women, they can give you an earful about white men. If you talk to Asian or Hispanic women, you'll get an earful about the men in their communities. But the difference is that these people are able to operate under the radar. And black people have never been able to operate under the radar. So we black people are always in the spotlight. And if it's something negative, that spotlight is going to shine so brightly on us that we aren't going to be able to see anything else. So the spotlight is on black men. And for this video, we're going to say that black men are responsible for most of the problems in the black community. So the question is, what's wrong with black men? If you would listen to some, you just might come away with the impression that black men are just downright uncivilized. Well, why would this be the case? Well, let's look at the components of civilization. There are seven components of civilization. They are social structure and family life. Father, head of the house, the mother's duties to take care of the children and the home. That's the first component of civilization. Number two is science and technology. We have that down, so we're good there. Number three, economy and trade. The major society, the white folk take care of that, so that's working. Number four, religion. Number five, arts and education. Number six, geography and agriculture. And number seven, government and leaders. Now, when we look at those seven components, we can say out of the seven, the first one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and the seventh one are out of sync in the black community. So what's wrong with black men? Our civilization has broken down. Our society has broken down. Four of the major components of a civilization are dysfunctional in our communities. That's what's wrong with black men. It's affecting them more than it is black women. Black women are handling it better. But black men know that they are supposed to do something about this. And they don't know what to do. The family structure, the religious structure, the educational structure, and the leadership structure, they're all dysfunctional. That's what's wrong with black men. Of those four components, I couldn't decide which one to talk about. So I put them in a hat, so to speak. And I decided I'm going to talk about the one that I draw. So I drew education. So this video is about black boys and the American education system. And I, I believe that this is a good place to start. Although the home typically would be the best place. But since I drew education, I'm going to talk about education. In most communities, the emphasis is on educating boys. 
boys will become men. Men are the leaders, the providers, and the protectors of the home and the culture. So it's important that boys have a way of making a living, making money, and taking care of the society in which he lives. But in the black community, the emphasis has always been on educating girls. Why would this be the case? The problem goes all the way back to slavery. It really does. Male slaves were worth more money than female slaves. A healthy young male slave could turn a poor white man into a wealthy man almost single-handedly. How, you might say? Well, in the day when cotton was king, a male slave that I just described, healthy and young, could pick anywhere from three to four hundred pounds of cotton in a day. It takes a thousand pounds of cotton to make a bale. A male slave could pick two bales of cotton in less than a week because they worked Monday through Saturday from can to can, as they say, from the time that you can see daylight until the time that you can't. So a male slave was worth much more than a female. By the end of the cotton season, one slave had put a poor man on his way to gaining wealth. So after a hearty season, they just kept buying more slaves and making more money. So, But they started with that one slave, okay? When slavery ended, it really didn't end. Through the illicit laws and the compromise of 1877, they were able to re-enslave black people for almost another hundred years. And this practice kept going. The male the black male making money, trying to share crop with dishonest people. And I'm going to say it that way. They entered into the Jim Crow system in which black men were the chief breadwinners for the black and the white people. And this has to be made very clear. Black people were taking care of those white people. So the black man's labor was instrumental in keeping the American economy stabilized. Also during the Jim Crow era, land grant and private colleges were being built for African Americans. There were two things happening here and they were almost opposite of each other. There was a need to keep black males in the cotton fields working and making money for the economy, although they weren't making very much money themselves. But there was another serious problem that black people were concerned about. The sexual abuse of black women and girls that had begun in slavery was still going on in the Jim Crow system because black women were still working in those plantation homes. So the men still had access to them. Black people desperately wanted to get those girls out of the domestic service business and into college so that they could make money outside of domestic service. Black families did not prefer black girls going to college over black boys. It was a matter of economics. They could barely make it in the sharecropping system because as I said before, they were dealing with dishonest people. They needed those boys working and they wanted those girls out of those homes because we know that this is where the biracials started. We know that. The number of black girls in school and eventually in college always outnumbered the number of black boys. This happened throughout Jim Crow and segregation. Black boys were the afterthought in education. Then enters integration. By the mid-60s, when integration began, the sharecropping days were mostly over, but the damage was done. The schools desegregated, and then here comes another monster. And that is the monster called the virtue of white women. And this is overlooked when we talk about the educational failure of black men. 
when we were in the segregated schools in the South, and I am speaking about Southern black culture, our teachers related to us both culturally and emotionally. They knew our parents. We went to church together. We had school events, ball games, talent shows, dances. There was a point that they even showed movies at our school. So we were an interrelated community of people who knew each other. Our mothers were in the club with our, uh, with our teachers. They had gone to school with them in some cases. They were our friends. They were our kinfolk. We were socially integrated. The point I am making is that we had culture. We had community culture and we had school culture. Our heroes and icons were on the walls of our classrooms. Booker T. Washington, Frederick Douglass, George Washington Carver, Ms. Mary McLeod Bethune, Martin Luther King, and Harriet Tubman. We looked at them every day, and it meant something. And then the schools integrated, and our culture was destroyed. All of a sudden, we didn't know anything. All of our icons were taken down from the walls. Even the trophies in our trophy cases were removed. Nothing could be left in a school that reminded us that we were black. They put up all those academies in the South. Every little county in the South had some kind of academy for white children to attend. And most of them did attend those, account, uh, those academies. But if one white child was in a school, that school was stripped of anything to do with black culture. And that wasn't the worst of it. The school systems were constantly looking for ways to segregate the black children from the white children. The first step was to retain the children. In the segregated schools, our teachers understood. They understood where we had come from. They understood a lot of children came from homes where their parents couldn't read and write and couldn't help them. So the black teachers did intervention automatically. Nobody had to tell them that intervention is a program. They did the intervention and children passed. Not so when those schools integrated. There was no additional help for the children. So the main thing was to retain the children. In my hometown, just about every black student that went to the predominantly white school was retained. My siblings and I were one of the few black families where none of the children were retained. And retention is the first step to putting children in special education. And in those days, special education was a place. It wasn't a service as the education department has, has made a point of coming out and saying now. It was a place. It was a place to isolate black children and take them out of the main school population where the white children were so that they felt rejected. Because remember, these people were really upset about the schools integrating. They did not want us in those schools. So the goal was to put as many black students in special education classes as possible. And, and, and this was a place that was somewhere at the end of the school building or even out of the building in a trailer away from the general population. But guess who the main target was for these special education classes? You guessed it. Black boys, the ones who were already, had already missed out on the opportunities to get the foundation. Now, the system was radar focused on getting those black boys out of the classroom and into some kind of special education arrangement. There are black men in the South to this day that are ashamed to admit that they were placed in those special education classes. This is a shameful blight on the American education system because it was done on purpose. This was done primarily to protect white girls. They did this to keep those boys away from the white girls and there was nothing they wouldn't do to prevent that. 
Sometimes I think white girls gravitate to black boys for this reason. It's a form of rebellion. They were in class with these kids. They saw what was done. And I think there's something in them that makes them rebel against what they knew was wrong. So when they decide they're going to get with a black guy, they get with a black guy. And there's nothing that parents can do about it. But I think that these things are interrelated in some way. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, so I don't know how to break it down. But I believe that they are related. Black boys were segregated more than black girls. This was a problem with black boys. They weren't as focused on black girls. Black girls got some of it, but black girls didn't get the brunt of it. Plus, black girls had a stronger foundation academically than black boys. So black boys suffered more from the fake integration. They were locked in those special education dungeons and in the low groups of every class, labeled dumb and couldn't do the work. And then, like the phoenix, they rose from the ashes. One thing was discovered that brought them into the marvelous light. The thing that black men can always do. They can always do physical strength. Their athletic ability was discovered. And that brought them out of the darkness into the marvelous light. So they went from being the laughing stock of the school. Isolated. Rejected. Labeled to now being the most popular kids in the school. And everybody's bragging about how fast they can run that ball. And they run that game through high school, through college, and into professional sports. But in reality, they are right back where they started. Building wealth for Massa. But what about the ones that don't have the athletic ability and they are stuck in the dungeon? Well, these children become the class clown or they just become straight out failures. They are the ones that are targeted to be taken out of circulation and put into free labor camps called prisons. So that's the plan. They build the prisons based on what the third grade class looks like. So what's happening in the black community? This is what's happening to the black community. Black boys don't get a good start. And the ones who do go on off because now that the athletes have, been, have become popular with Massa and his children, especially his daughters, now he's going to get that girl that they isolated him from in the fifth grade. So that's, that's his dream girl because he couldn't have her then. So now he gets her. So he's, he'll be okay until he does what those basketball players did trying to scam the insurance company. And then they'll be in jail with the kids they were in special ed with years ago. Quantavius and Snooky Boy. But this is what's happened. The American education system fails black, black boys. This is what's wrong with black men. Now, of the ones who don't end up in prison, well, a lot of the people who are wreaking havoc in the black community have been to prison. And a lot of the ones who haven't been to prison have just checked out of life because they, they do not have the basic skills that it takes to function in a highly sophisticated society like the one we live in. So, if what's wrong with the black community is black men, and if four of the pillars of a civilization are dysfunctioning, and education is one of those pillars, then the education system in the United States has failed black boys. I do point the finger at the education system, as well as the church and the home, but that's a discussion for another day. Those are discussions for another day. Now, the problem of black men with education is an in-house problem. And I'm going to say, and this is my opinion, 
Black boys need to be in a black church school from pre-K through at least the fifth grade. That's elementary school. As things stand now, black boys collectively are not going to succeed unless they're in an environment where there is differentiated instruction, where they receive visual, auditory, and kinesthetic instruction, and above all, where there are teachers who know that they can do the work and require them to do it. The public school system in the United States has failed black boys, it is true, but children need to have hands-on attention from their parents when they are in a learning environment. The school is not just somewhere to drop the children off. You have to be involved in their education. And I believe that in a church where the family belongs to the church or in some kind of a homeschool situation would be the best option for these children. The third option is for black people to really stay on top of the educational program that their children are enlisted in. You have to stay on top of these things because nobody cares more about your children than you do. So you have to be the primary investor in your children. You have to care more than anybody else. But what's wrong with black men, one of the problems is education. Now we know that 10% of any group of people is going to be gifted. So the top 10% of black boys are gifted. So we don't have to worry about them. They're going to make it no matter what happens. There's going to be another 15, 10 to 15, maybe even 20% who's going to make it because of hard work and determination. They'll refuse to lose. And then you've got that other large group that has to be dealt with. And that's the group that we have to be concerned about in black America. So this is my solution. What's wrong with black men? Well, our society has broken down. And there are problems with the breakdown. And one of the major problems with the breakdown with black men is education. They need to be better educated. And that is a problem for the black community. We cannot leave this to society or the government or white people. We have to do this. And I believe the church should be involved or the synagogue or the mosque or whatever your religious affiliation is. And I think some of them do have these things. Some of them do. Fortunately for us, some of them do. In order for us to become whole and healed, more of it has to be done. I'm going to end the video by saying that if you are on social media, especially YouTube these days, you could easily become discouraged whether you are a black man or a black woman. But I would encourage you to stay focused on the problems. The problems in our communities are the family breakdown, the breakdown in religion, the breakdown in education, and the breakdown in leadership. That's where our focus has to be. I'm listening to a lot of this too. And black women have come out swinging. And I think that that's only natural. Because there has been a lot of trash talking about black women. But we have to stay focused on our problems. Our problems in the community are both genders. We both have to work together. So uh, responsible. <laughs> we, have, we have to do this together. And we can't just give up on everybody. And the ones who should divest, they, they should. They should do what's right for them. But most of us are not going to divest. Most of us are going to be, be in the black community. So we have to do what's best for ourselves. This generation of black men, we have to start now. We can't go back and redo the past. But we can start now. And that really is what we're going to have to do. Because we're going to survive. That, that we're going to survive. However, however we're supposed to survive, that's how we're going to survive. But we have to do something. And time is of the essence. Thank you for listening. I want to send a special shout out and thank you to TF. These are your initials. 
I appreciate you and I appreciate your input and always look forward to your comments. Thanks everybody. Subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, share the video, and as always, have a great day.